money. Please sit down. So, Ms. Chagra, why do you wish to join the civil service? Sir, I think civil services provides a unique opportunity through which one can contribute to the process of nation building. And also, it's a good career opportunity. That's why I want to join civil services. And what qualities will you bring to this job? Sir, I think I'm a person of principles. So, person of? Principles. So, I possess the requisite honesty and integrity. Mm -hmm. And since I'm a student of literature, uh, the empathy that a student of literature possesses would be of help in civil services. So, you, uh, honesty, empathy, yeah, these are good qualities, actually. And honesty is always the best quality. But uh, you need something more. Some mm -hmm. other additional qualities for uh, holding these jobs, you know, IAS, IPS, which are your first two choices. Think of the leadership skills. Leadership skills or leadership qualities. Now, what are those qualities can you think of? The leadership qualities? What are those qualities? Which are the ability to lead. Ability to lead. Ability to lead and motivate. Right? Yes. Now how do you do that? What is the best way of doing? By engaging all the stakeholders in a process. You involve all the stakeholders and uh, you have to no, have the ability. Are management, uh, yes. You are management jack and all the stakeholders. You have 2000 cop cops under you. You will try to engage everyone. Huh? How will you engage? Think of something else. All right, never mind. Uh, would you like to yes. You Ms. Chatha, yes, uh, you heard of the Right to Information Act? Yes, sir. What are the, what are the objectives of this act? The transparency that it would bring in the process of governance okay. is the major objective. Then accountability of the people in office who are holding the office. That's another objective of the ITI. Now, uh, you, uh, supposing you seek information under the right to information yes. act, can the government department deny certain information? Yes, some of the information which uh, are uh, necessary to hold the integrity of the nation, which okay. are classified in nature, that's the government Is it exemptions are given in the RTI Act itself? Yes, sir. Okay. Regarding the right. international right. relations. Yeah. And also, uh, are there any organizations which are exempt from the purview of the Right to Information Act? I'm not sure of the organizations. They are. They are. Okay. There's, there's a schedule too under which the okay. organizations uh, which are exempted basically intelligence and security agencies are there. Okay. Now recently in the newspapers there is a report about some criticism of selection of the information commission. Did you read about that? No sir. Okay. Sorry. Now, uh, there is uh, a Central Information Commission. Yes, sir. What is the uh, role of the Central Information Commission? A uh, Central Information Commission uh, gets its powers from the RTI Act, and uh, it is the main uh, body which uh, comes under the ambit of RTI Act and ensures that the information which a person seeks from the government departments or offices are given in a defined time period. Does it have an appellate role or not? The CIC. If you don't get information from a government department, whom do you complain? Probably the CIC, but I'm not sure. CIC. The second appeal lies to the CIC. So the primary role of the CIC is as an appellate, appellate body. body. And then of course, the overseeing function is also there. Yes. Okay. Uh, you heard of this, uh, the talks between India and Pakistan relating to the Kartarpur side yes, corridor, yes. Kartarpur corridor. Yes, what is the um, uh, the purpose of this corridor? Uh, since it's the 550th birth anniversary of Guru Nanak Dev Ji in November 2019, yeah. so the Kartarpur corridor enables the uh, believers of uh, Sikh religion, in particular, to visit the place where Guru Nanak Dev Ji spent 18 years of his life. So what do you think was the reason why the initiative uh, uh, was taken by Pakistan? Do you think there is an ulterior motive or is it too mental? There could be sir. There could be because as they say the Khalistan referendum is to take place in 2020. So there could be ulterior motives 
but on the face of it there does not seem to be a so. correct now pune hosted a very major uh, sporting event recently khelo india youth games yes, are you aware of that no sir no okay okay let's uh, take something else you know this issue of appointment of state dgps yes. right to the police this is the matter is with the supreme court supreme court has given certain directions the state governments have given this few of them five of them have given their viewpoints so what is the supreme court direction on this uh, supreme court in protest in judgment uh, upheld that the people like the senior postings in police like dgp uh, should the panel before the incumbent dgp re- retires the panel has to uh, sorry the state government has to submit uh, the names of certain police officers in higher position whom they consider for the rank of dgp to the upsc and upsc would uh, then upsc would recommend upsc them. would make the panel UPSC yes. would make, make the panel, the panel and, the, which, and the government yes. would be choose that. Yes. Now, do you think this is uh, right? Because the state government say that law and order is a state subject, and therefore the choice of the DGP should be left to us. Sometimes, because because the politicization takes over, then such a step is right, yes. provided yes, the division of separation of power is not heard. Okay. Uh, Now this uh, uh, on the issue of Lokpal. Now uh, Anna Hazare has given a he has announced that he is going to go on a hunger strike from 30th of January. Why? What is the reason for that? Is it because of the Lokpal issue? Why is it being delayed? The reasons uh, for delay, uh, as they cite, is because the leader of opposition is not. Has the Supreme Court uh, in the last few days yes. given some direction? It has said that you still must appoint a Lokpal. Okay. Right. Thank you. Very respectable. Right. Thank you. Okay. Sunny, you have read Marx? Yes. Marx, you know, said something about class struggle. Yes. You have read Gandhi also. Sorry. Gandhi. Yes. Gandhi ji never advocated for struggle, yes. class struggle, etc. What is exactly their point of difference, and how Gandhi ji comes at? Let's go existence of rich and poor. Yes. Yes. So, while Marx states that there are two, basically two major classes, haves and have-nots, mm. and uh, the uh, cycle of time would unfold in such a way that the have-nots will have to uh, overthrow the haves and come to the position of power, which he calls the state of uh, communism that would occur, a classless society. State of communism is different when they. Overthrow it is so, dictatorship of the proletariat. Yes. Then only communism. Communism, okay. and there would be a classless society. On the other hand, Gandhi ji did not advocate violence as mm-hmm. Marx did. Mm-hmm. Yes. No, but, but how? How he could reconcile this? Really? That they could coexist. The rich and the poor in the society could coexist because Gandhi ji had something, but I mean, yes. he, he never advocated violence. Yes. Never. No struggle between them. So what exactly he said regarding the reconciliation of the rich and the poor? Ah. Probably he said the, the Gandhian talisman, as it says, that rich should exist, but uh, in any action that that one takes, one should consider that will it have an effect on the until they are the last mm-hmm. man. So trusteeship theory. Trusteeship theory. Yes. Ah. Yes. Sir. They should hold their wealth in trust. Yes, okay. Let me come to some other point, some other topic. Um, have you read uh, Ramachandra Guha's uh, India After Gandhi? No, sir, I haven't read that. Okay. Have you read Emin Srinivas? Emin Srinivas. Uh, In sociology. Yes, sir. Yes. Isn't I have it? Yes. Okay. So. he had mentioned about the role of caste in politics yes sir role of caste in politics so why they say i mean cinema san many social that in india they don't caste their vote but they vote their caste yes so what is the underlying meaning so there are historical reasons to it because caste is no, such an em- embedded 
Indianness. Mm. Caste structure is embedded in Indian society in such a way mm. that it plays a, a crucial role when people vote. Though it is changing in some sections of society mm. of late, but predominantly it's the caste which influences. Probably because the uh, hierarchy of our society is based on the Varna system, even the occupational differentiation is based on the Varna system, which decides the caste. So that is the reason why people are so, uh, people connect everything. No, I am not system. saying why caste system is persisting. I say, why they vote their caste? That means yes, uh, voting yes. is mostly on caste Spaces. lines. Yes. Why? Because they would expect that a representative of their own caste would uh, give certain uh, benefits to them if they come to power, which a person of who is not of their own caste might not empathize with them. So that is why they want people of their own caste to come to power. Deeply embedded, correct dimension. Yes. And then go in that line. Okay. Uh, modernization of Indian tradition. Yes. Is there a book by that name? Yes, there is. Who are these things? I'm not sure if you know the author, sir. What name is she? Okay. Jogendra Jogen Singh. Jogendra Singh, yes. Jogen yes. Singh. Must have read it. Yes. Okay. The book I have not read. Oh, have not read, read. about. Now, why they call of uh, modernization of Indian tradition? What are the traditions which have been modernized? The Indian traditions that Yogendra Singh uh, talks of, I am not very really sure, but I am. No, but you can, because you are a sociologist student. You may not also study Yogendra Singh, but yes. I know that they have been mentioned in all sociology. So the Indian tradition that he talks of could be, I'm not <coughs> sure, because uh, of caste and class. So he's talking of the modernization of the caste and the class. No, you see, Indian tradition, yes. they say that, you know, caste is one, family, yes. marriage, yes. and how in the modern, it is modern, no, modern yes. days, things have changed. changed. And what are the changes? Yes. That is what you study. Yes. Yes. Okay, one more question. Mm, you know, Regarding the citizenship amendment bill, yes, sir. lot of protest in North East. Yes. Huh? yes. Other parts of the world, North East, there is lot of protest. Almost yes. all are North East states. Right. What is the reason? So, because of the citizen, uh, citizenship amendment bill, they said they say that the provision of Assam Accord would be diluted and there would be a demographic change because we would allow. That is in Assam. Yes. But even other North Eastern states are opposed. Because the cut-off date which was decided in Assam Accord That is correct. Yes. That 25th March 1971, now it is something else. How yes. they reconcile that. But uh, that is one of the, uh, you know, entire North East is in place. They are protesting. Probably because they fear the demographic change that will Demographic, this change of culture, change, yes. not getting jobs, all this. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. You organized a literary press? Yes, ma'am. What did you do in that? Uh, it was a freshman <coughs> year uh, in MCMD in college where I studied. So it was a two-day event. What and the activities? What the After the activities? activities. Yes. There were two book launches. Mm -hmm. uh, of one was uh, an author from Shumla, and the other was an author from Chandigarh itself. And we organized a youth parliament, mm -hmm. and uh, there were other speakers too who came and addressed the students. Recently, there was a Nadal Literary Festival. Uh, where one of our dignitaries was called and then she the invitation was withdrawn. Any idea who it was and why? Nayan Tara Sagar. Yes, and why was the invitation withdrawn? What was the reason given? I am not sure of the recall now. Because she was one of those who was involved with the award yes. Okay. Now you also meditate. Yes. What sort of meditation do you do? Uh, I practice guided meditation. I joined an organization where they give certain video recordings and audio recordings to which you listen and then you focus on your own thoughts and uh, think as on your thoughts or on your feelings? Thoughts. On your thoughts. thoughts. But if you're focusing on your thoughts, your thoughts go to all places, then how do you meditate? Because when you consciously uh, think about your thoughts, your thoughts tend to slow down. So that's where you can direct your thoughts. Give me an example of so how will you meditate? Well, uh, for instance, about? Uh, at any point of time, there are hundreds of thoughts going on in your mind. Okay, give me one example. Okay. So, for example, you will detach your own self and try to think what you're thinking. In Thank that you. process. Okay, <laughs> never mind. 
Uh, you're from Patiala. Yes. Hmm? Rajaiwa, but oh. district Patiala. Yes. So give me some positives and a negative of your district. The positives are that since it's uh, the uh, district uh, which has a lot of tourist potential, mm -hmm. so there are various circuits like there's heritage circuit and there's a lot of uh, uh, scope for people to come and buy certain products which are specific to Patiala, like uh, this Punjabi Juti as they say. The negatives are that a lot of population is dependent on agriculture and the farmers are in a position of distress as of now. So the joblessness that is created because of the migration of rural population who are unable to get jobs in the farms is creating a problem in urban areas as well. So when you talk of migrations, yes. there are a large number of people migrating from Punjab. Which are the places they generally migrate to? Is it only within the country or even outside? outside. Even outside. Which places? Yeah. Canada, major. Why Canada? Because it is uh, quite open to receiving people in the present situation. So when people migrate, there are what is known as the push factors and the pull factors. Yes. Can you mention some of these? Yes. Push factors would be, as I mentioned, ma'am, uh, the farm distress, mm -hmm. uh, which are, since the agriculture sector is not diversified as it should, so people are tending to migrate. Uh, as far as pull factors are concerned, the economic opportunities and the minimum wage that is fixed in Canada for our, on an hourly basis uh, attracts the attention of the youth in particular, which pulls them to migrate. So what are the effects of migration on those who migrate and those who are left behind? Okay. Uh, as far as youth migration is concerned, the effect uh, on a personal level is uh, uh, on a personal level I will talk first, is that they tend to get better employment opportunities and now uh, there is a substantial number of Punjabi population, so there is not much of a cultural problem. Uh, on a societal level, we are uh, we are getting short of our demographic dividend, as they say. We would not be able to extract the best out of it. But also, but when the youth moves out, let's say, into another city in the country, there is also what is known as ghettoism. There is a problem of uh, housing. Yes. Mm -hmm. So then, what happens? Problem of housing. You're talking uh, in the in the country from where they migrate. Yes. Uh, for, for example, a person migrates in the problem from the village yes. to the urban areas okay. when they migrate, okay. what happens? Yes, there is a ghettoization and creation of slums on the periphery of the urban area. So what does that lead to? Any problems? Social problems? Yes, yes ma'am. What sort of problems? For example, sanitation is not appropriate. Yes. Then there is problem of... Uh, Would you say this leads to crime also? Yes. Mm -hmm. So overcrowding leads to certain problems. My last question, since you did cultural studies, yes. what did you study under cultural studies? Uh, cultural studies, uh, it was uh, six months mm -hmm. course in which I studied cultural studies. So we studied how different cultures are integrated, not necessarily what the, cultural, what the culture of a particular area comprises of, but how different people perceive of certain cultures or what comprises of a culture. So did you also study the cultures within the different states of the country no. or was it? No ma'am, it was all international authors, none of them was an Indian author. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Ms. Chapa, yes. recently Government of India waiting for 10% reservation yes. and economic criteria, yes. right? As a student of sociology, how do you look at this? Sir, I think we have to go back to the uh, basic uh, ideal where by reservation came in. The reservation came in because we wanted to uplift certain castes which was socially deprived and not economically deprived. So, uh, as the historical reason... That criteria, does it hold good? In the, in the present uh, reservation, no. Because the reservation was essentially meant to be on the upliftment of the social backwardness and not the economic backwardness. But nonetheless, it is an affirmative action which will, uh, as they say, bring out economically weaker sections of the upper caste, so to say. Uh, so it is a positive move. But the uh, predominant ideal why the reservation started uh, in the beginning does not hold good in this. You mentioned of the agrarian stress in, yes. in particular, I think. 
to the district. Last year, government of Madhya went in for loan waiver. How do you look at that? Did it bring in any amount of? So the waiver was for small and marginal farmers, uh, and it was an institutional loan waiver. The institutional loans which people take, farmers take, were waived. But it is a mere palliative measure in the short term and does not hold good in the long term. First of all, because it adds to the fiscal problems of the state. Secondly, because uh, it is not the go to solution. Do you have any statistics available about how much of loan was made? Around 2 lakh farmers were I think the amount was very, very marginal. Then. Around 2 lakh farmers were benefited, but I don't know the amount that. Okay, and out. also we need structural reforms that would help in the long run and not the farm loan waivers which is valid. The concept of ease of doing business, how significant is that and have we made any progress in that? So ease of doing business will ensure that uh, the investments which are coming to our country increase. That which organization is called this concept? Ease which organization? Well, Small bank, right? right. Yeah. So it would attract FDI inflows in the country, and uh, that would be a boost for our economy as well. That would create jobs also. What are the parameters that go into computation of? Uh, I think of a few, sir. Uh, the clearances, the single window clearances, uh, and uh, how effective is the? Mental uh, uh, three areas in which we have made some progress. In ease of doing business. The clearances part is we, we have made improvements. Secondly, through insolvency and bankruptcy code, we have made improvements in how a company can, uh, in a faster way, resolve its crisis. So that's where we have made improvements. GST? Yes, GST also because we have come with lesser slabs of taxes. Okay, last question. Yes. Total of English literature. Yes. This year, Gyanpit Award was given to yes. somebody, to um, an Indian author yes. in English. Yes. What is his name? Amitabh Kush. Have you read any of the books? Yes, I've read one, sir. What is the single thing in most of them? I just read one book, The Shadow Lines, in which the backdrop is of uh, two partitions. One is India Pakistan, and the second is the partition of Pakistan itself, that is creation of Bangladesh. And how uh, uh, there is an uh, underlying theme of how different people interpret partition in different lights. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. What is the growth rate of Punjab? So as, per, as per recent reports, 6.2 percent. And uh, in Human Development Index, where does it stand among the states? The rank, I am not aware, but it's 0 0.7 percent. It's high. Number 8 states. What are the sociological factors which lead to crime? So first of all, it's um, the caste. Um, um, secondly, it's the class. And thirdly, it class would also. be... Class also class, leads yes, sir, to crime. Yes, oh. the lower classes which are unable to earn well and fend for themselves might be led towards crime. And are you not talking about caste? Caste is I am talking of both, sir, because in our society, caste and class are quite intertwined. So, usually, caste, lower castes are so also. Caste or class, what else? Uh, it could be disruptions in family, family disruptions, then no, 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 loss of social Disruption can, or the family can take place, may not take place. There are some ingrained factors. In the society, poverty is one. Poverty, yes, sir. Poverty. Unemployment is one. Another. Patriarchy. Patriarchy, definitely. You think Make in India is succeeding? Yes, sir. Make in India is succeeding to a good extent. In what way? Sir, through Make in India, we have been able to uh, invite uh, different investors. In and that has led to mean which investors have come from abroad? Mm -hmm. Major investors. I'm not sure of the names. Mm -hmm. Sorry. 
What was the purpose of making it? So that our people get jobs and our growth so the so that, and, and also our manufacturers can supply the raw materials and uh, but economy. Manufacturing will provide the raw material. I mean, I the, the ancillary industries would provide the no. raw material to the industry. Yeah. What you are saying? Manufacturing providing raw materials. Raw material is provided from, from the coal mines, etc. So the the steel mines. Yes. Manufacturing is a different. The purpose was that India will become a manufacturing hub. Yes. And we will take our contribution of manufacturing from the present 16 or 17 to 25. Yes. Right? Yes. And we will produce world class goods and we will become an export hub also. Yes. That was the purpose. All right. So, no progress has been made. Where is the progress? Except in telecom. Some Chinese farms or these uh, Samsung etc. They have established their uh, mobile companies. Yes. Automobile sector was already good, so it is also thriving. These are the only two areas. But nothing. How much FDI has come in India in 1780? If you don't, I'm not sure you will not know how much of it went into manufacturing. Because that was the purpose, that if people invest in India and then. So you have to think of this. Now, there's one major source of revenue in India that is called remittances. What is it and how much we got in 1790? Remittances is the amount that India receives or the Indian families receive in the form of cash inflow from the members of the family who have worked born abroad mm -hmm. and they are earning outside India. Mm -hmm. The amount of remittances which we have received in 1718, I'm not sure of the figures. Who is the biggest recipient of it's remittances in, in the world? Of the country where? Huh? It's India, I think. India, yes. you are right. If you, uh, if you were made the DM of Patiala, are you Patiala? Are you from Patiala? Yes. What are the most pressing problems of the common man that you will solve? As far as rural areas are concerned, the problem is of farm distress, and there is less diversification of farming sectors to require because of the economy of Punjab is mainly reliant on agriculture and that has reached its saturation. The productivity is not increasing anymore. And so farm distress is what you will so take care of. Yes. How will you take care of it as a day? Through proper implementation of the schemes that the government of India has. Which are those schemes? Uh, like ENAM is one of them. ENAM. Yes. The second would be... Uh, what is ENAM meant for? ENAM is uh, a reform in the marketing process of the agricultural Agreed, industry. Agreed, but what does it do? It connects the uh, markets it, of uh, uh, It connects on, the on an farmer online. to that to a market. Yes, right. On online platform. Online. Yes. Are you aware how many uh, farmers, what percentage of farmers are able to use internet for getting yes. information in Quite Punjab? Less. Quite less. Quite less. Then what is the use? of creating a, a, a facility which no one knows how to use. Even an educated farmer like me cannot, don't know where to find a Monday for my produce. Probably there are uh, several groups and uh, You have NGOs. to think carefully before answering these questions. Farm distress, what are the projects going in your state? What really farm distress? What is the state of unemployment? In front of huh? The percentage, I'm not sure of the figures, but the unemployment is on rise. Is on the rise? Yes. So, would you not take care of it? Yes. How will you take care? What are the schemes? Uh, first of all, Madrega is one of the schemes Madrega. through Madrega. which 100 days of employment are provided. No, that everyone knows, but you will use Madrega. Madrega, this one. All right. Any other uh, scheme which you can think of to help the poor? Right now, I cannot think of any other schemes. Food security scheme? Yes. 
What does food security scheme provide? It provides uh, food grains and uh, at what rate? At rupees two per kg of uh, wheat flour and one wheat flour. Wheat flour. Wheat flour. Wheat They have to know themselves. Wheat and also dal and certain dal. Yes, they get that. No. Three, three types of grain. rice, wheat, and coarse grain. So, what is a at what rate it is provided, and at what is scale to a family? Uh, five persons. If there are in a household, there are five persons. Then uh, it's a not sure the exact amount. Twenty-five kg. Twenty-five. Perfect. All right, we close our interview. Thank you, sir. When is your interview? It's only 26th of February. 26th of February. This is your first interview? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. first interview. You are fresh from college? Yes, sir. Okay. So you have done very well. You have been able to handle questions, but I think you need to uh, strengthen okay. your facts. Okay. Your facts are missing. And these are the areas where you should know. Like, uh, you said, I don't know, something is happening. DGP, Lokpal, then of course, Karl Marx, caste and elections. These are social, 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 sociological factors for crime, modernization of Indian traditions. Then Tara cycle and push pull factors, special studies, etc. Then we came to some important issues of current affairs, for instance, citizenship amendment bill. Then loan waivers, ease of doing business. Right? Then I asked you about uh, remittances and FDI. Then what are the schemes running for welfare of the people in a district? That also you should. This question can be asked directly, what is schemes are running? Or if you are a collector, how will, which scheme will you? So you can check up these schemes. There are plenty of schemes. Huh? So take care of those schemes like uh, education. There is this yes. uh, uh, midday meal scheme. Yes. Then for women and child, there is integrated child development scheme. Yes. So those schemes, you PDS, you will uh, strengthen. So these are things you will see. Ina, if you are a member, these are all the focus things. Okay. Yeah. No one has no time for the farmer to go to the market and find out where to buy it. Which Monday we will buy it. So these things you will study. Sir, in Punjab, we have seen a lot of growth rate. It is low. Six point two one. It is still at the number. It's 17-18. Yes. Who is number one? As per the reports that came out yesterday, I think it's Bihar. Bihar, who is the problem? Not Bihar. They are the problem. Karnatak number two. That's number one, number three, sir. This is 17-18, not 18. Okay, all right. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update.